Hello, welcome to Enough's Engineering, I'm Alan. As you can see, today we're already in the workshop and we're finishing off the clamp for the rotating head. This is the finished clamp with the bushes, the spring and the pivot nut in place. All these parts we made in last week's video, so this week we're just fitting it to the head, testing the head and make sure everything's working okay. So let's see how we do it. Just check that the thread fits okay. This is what we have so far. And this round nut will fit there. So I need to drill a 10 millimeter hole for the nut to fit. I've turned the component on its end and now I'm just centre drilling for a six and a half millimetre hole. I've now put the other half of the clamp in and I'm drilling a six and a half mil hole so that the bolt can pass through. This is where we are at the moment. Clamping bushes here, which is a pivot. This bush that goes in there has a hole drilled through and tapped, and then this adjusting screw goes through. and pulls this part shut and that will cause it to clamp on the spindle. Next job is to drill a hole on centre line here, fit another bush in here and these two bushes will hold this plate firm and the only plate that will move is this, this one so this will grip onto the spindle. Once I've inserted a bush in here on centre line I have two holes that I can line up on the rotating head and I can drill and tap the plate on the rotating head to hold this part firm. The only part that moves is this clamp. Now fitted a 12mm end mill because I want a flat bottom to this shoulder. 
I'm going to go six millimeters deep. This little bush now will just press into there to give me the same as, as that. So I'll have two five mil cap heads. So these are my two location points now. I need to transfer these holes to the rotary head and tap them M5. I've marked the hole position on the rotary head and now I'm going to centre drill. This is the finished clamp. So I made two bushes to go on this. There's a second one. I was going to put it here on the corner, drill a hole and put that there, and drill another hole in there. But these two holes seem to be holding it. I'll keep that one, and if need be, I can drill another hole in and fit this. I'll put a washer on here, and that's a file part of the washer off so it will go flat against the head. Then we'll fit the two screws. And the idea of the step bush is that it has a stepped hole. When this bush goes down locates on the step in the hole and then pulls the plate down the last little bit. That way I can have the cap head flush with the surface but still clamp the plate down. Clamp that down. That doesn't interfere with the, the clamping piece at the back here. Clamp this one down. You can see the last bit, it pulls it down to the face of the rotary head. If we push this in and out, you can see the clamp bit moving at the back. Just turn it around slightly. And you can see it's clear here. It should turn free, which it does. Let me put the three jaw chuck on. You see under the bottom of this three jaw chuck there are three cap heads holding the chuck onto the plate. That's where I have to watch because as this tightens down, that's turning the spindle there. The gap here is very small, that's why I couldn't have anything above the 10mm 
surface. If I had the capids above that surface, they just fell, especially this one, it would fell, stop it turning. So that's moving freely. Turn the clamp. That's, that's grip, you can see it's turning the hole. That's just started to grip. In fact, if I back it off, it's, it's undoing the chuck. Quarter of a turn, and it's free. Let's get some pressure behind that. I've got a piece of steel which I'm just putting across the shop jaws as a lever. Tighten that up on the chuck. That's off. You can see now, turn that with one finger. Tighten up another half. That's not going to move when you're cutting material. If it did, you could still go another half. That's lock solid. It's off. Lock solid. Half a turn for that. And also, I can lock that, pull this, and that will take the chuck off the spindle. This is the locking mechanism clamp screw. That's just a piece of 3D rod with a washer on. This is the lever. It's a hexagon nut with the same thread. The hexagon nut is spring loaded. So once you locate or lock the head, you can then pull this back and turn the handle to whatever position you want. It's like a spanner on the end. You can turn that to any position. If you found that when it was locked fully, the handle was there and this is in the way, you just take it out, turn it down and it'll locate out of the way. I'm pleased with that. It all works. It does what I wanted it to do. And the main thing is when you take the clamp off, it's free. I put a small spring in here so when I undo it, I know it's not dragging on the spindle. I found a small spring which might do that. The spring fits over the thread. You can put that through. So as that tightens up, as I undo it now, you can see the spring pushing it back clear. No drag at all. It's the job done. Well, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was interesting. And we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.